Now let's get into Q&A and go from there. So, uh, Jeff, Jeff Lockerbie. This is a good question, actually. So does this mean Sam Bakeman is taking part in the Citadel BS since he has a stake in Robinhood now? That's interesting because Sam Bakeman did buy a pretty sizable, I want to say it's between 6.7 and 9.2% of Robinhood. Um, so he's got a stake into it, which is Citadel. But remember, that's just Robinhood. Just because he's a part of Robinhood doesn't mean per se he's a part of Citadel unless something else comes out. But uh, I will say... It is interesting how SBF and, and FTX are really pushing the, uh, the angle of uh, equities. They've already rolled it out. People in America, different people are able to buy and sell uh, stocks and equities, which are securities. Crazy, right? Uh, but I don't think uh, he's involved in that, that I know of. I could be wrong. All right. So thanks for that one. Uh, Vatican Life, 50K, five best altcoins to buy right now. I'm not buying anything right now. That's, a, that's the truth. The truth is that I'm not buying anything right now because I'm waiting for the CPI numbers to come out on Friday, 8.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And I'm worried that the inflation rate's not under control. If it is, so here's the thing. There's two ways to play it. If it is under control and the numbers come out, immediately when those numbers come out and they're like, let's say that it goes from 8.3 or whatever it was, down to like 8.1 or 8%. And you're like, oh, hey, inflation is coming down. The, the, the Fed rates are doing good, which would mean, I would think, I'm just guessing, don't do what I do. The market might go up a little bit. So then all the money that I would have spent dollar cost averaging during the week, I will immediately put it in and wait for the price to go up. And that's it. Now, if it goes the opposite way, and they say, hey, the numbers went from 8.3 to 8.4, 8.5. The Fed quantitative tightening is not working. We're going to see some more pain. So the market d takes a little pullback. Then I take all the money that I was supposed to dollar cost average. And uh, I wait for about an hour, two, three, as I see the market do this, 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 and then I buy. It's uh, one of those two things. Either I buy uh, real fast or I buy real slow. It's one of those two. And I'm not in it to time the market perfectly. I will never time it. I will never sell at the absolute top and buy at the absolute bottom. It just doesn't happen. Yes, gasoline does have a ripple. Do you know? I don't know where you guys are at, but uh, in America, do you know what the gas, I, we talked about this yesterday. You know what the gas prices are? Let me show you. It's a great website. It's called AAA Gas Prices. And the national average is $4.95. That's per gallon, not per liter. Per gallon. And God, if I don't, so per liter, it'd be awful. And just so you know, around all the states, it's about four bucks, around almost five bucks. That actually went up from yesterday, I think. And, the, and a year ago, it was three dollars. Two dollars. That's a big increase. And of course, I always want to bring up California. $6.39 for a gallon. Jeez. So, yeah, I think that's not looking too great. I wish they would show us. No, they can't. Month to month. Oh, well. That's what we got. So, yeah, we'll see. What? Six fifty a gallon in North. Damn, that's crazy. That's a great question. Crypto Mike, what happens if the war in Ukraine ends suddenly? That's good news. Although... I was meeting with a developer uh, this morning, me and the wife. Uh, we're trying to do some upgrades to our sports facility. And, uh, and, I, and he's really backed up. And he said, yeah, because we can't get to your project for like another 12 months. Okay. I said, well, that might be good because, you know, at that point, you know, I know that all the different uh, prices are going up substantially for lumber and for metals and all those different things, especially with the, with the supply chain constriction. So maybe in a year, it'll be better, you know, as, as uh, these supply chains open up. And he goes, look, man, he goes, I've been doing this for like 30 years. And uh, I, he goes, here's the thing. He goes, even ever since Hurricane Katrina, th people thought the prices would go down, uh, you know, after, you know, so much time. But he goes, what happens is when you have a disaster area, then all a bunch of supplies flood into that area. 
And then of course, the same thing happened in, in Puerto Rico, but all those, those uh, resources flood and Ukraine's a pretty big area. So all those like the metals, the lumbers, the different things that are needed to, to rebuild a society, those all get pushed into the Ukraine. So he goes, if you think that the price is going to go down, he goes, uh, I don't see that happening. He goes, if the war uh, sputters out. And I was like, well, that's not good news. So uh, you can look at it like that, or you can look at it as maybe the markets would look at that as positive. I personally see it as positive, you know, because then if there's no ambiguity and we can say we can start moving forward. But uh, the market, the market market, Wall Street likes even kilter and no surprises. So with the war done, then you'll probably see a spike initially in prices, but then you'll see, uh, unfortunately, a spike a little bit in um, different things that are needed to, like I said, rebuild a society. <laughs> there we go. All right. Crazy as diesel. I'm making half what I was making last year after operating costs come on a week. See, that's another thing. Like when people talk about, well, you know, they're doing the best for, for the Fed to actually uh, bring those CPI numbers down. But I mean, all the costs, when you go to like Walmart or Target or wherever you go to shop, um, I just have noticed, I'm like, am I back in Puerto Rico? Because like the prices are pretty high in a lot of things. And I thought about it, I'm like, well, it's not just the supply chain of, of those goods, but it's also the supply chain of gas. The most expensive part of any distribution is the last mile. So even though if you can get those, those uh, freight liners to actually come over here and drop off uh, all those different supplies, which, you know, there's been a, a, an uptick and a little bit of improvement. But now that, uh, that the gas prices are increasing, that means that someone's got to eat those costs. And the manufacturers will, uh, the Walmarts and the Targets will, but guess who gets uh, that passed on to? That's you and me. All right. Mike is surprised. Uh, inflation would even not not be an issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Edward says, Peter Arminas by invitation only. No, same establishment. Yes, pretty much. Uh, the smokehouse. I'm just in, we live in Puerto Rico, but we vacation in Texas and we are vacationing in Texas right now. And actually tomorrow morning, I'm leaving to go to Austin to a consensus and uh, I'll see everybody there if you want to stop by. But uh, no video for Thursday, probably Friday too, and maybe probably Saturday. Sorry, has to be done. And that's it. <laughs> Peter Schiff lives in Dorado, penthouse number, blah, 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 I guess. No, I know Peter Schiff does live there. Ah, oh, South Africa. Thanks for stopping by. Sharp suit. Uh, please do a deep talk about wash tray. Seems like a perfect time and there are zero good views on it. I'll make it very simple for you. Um, wash trading is illegal, illegal in uh, equities, in stocks. You can't just, you can't sell your Tesla and just take a massive loss on your taxes and then buy it right back immediately. You have to wait like 30 days. But that is not, not true for crypto. I did it myself on with XRP. And uh, I bought XRP, I DCA'd, but I took a big hit when, the SEC sued them, sued Ripple. So I saw it go from like a buck, 75 to 50 and like 22, 21 cents. I sold all of it, all of it. And then uh, I took some massive losses on my tax, which is good, but you can only take it to $3,000 per year. That's only in America. I don't know what it is everywhere else. Talk to your CPA or whatever they call them, wherever you're at. And uh, I sold it all and I bought it right back because you can do that. And you take those losses, but again, it's only 3,000 a year. But what's good though, is you can, you can take those like for the next, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I'll be taking huge losses. I mean, 30,000 bucks, which is not bad. So that's what it is. I hope that makes sense. That's not that, it's not super difficult. Just uh, you got to share that with your, your CPA. Yeah, where'd I go? Okay. What's your thoughts on Algorand? I like Algorand. I think I still have some. And uh, I just don't like that, that lockup period. 
and uh, their amount of, of, of the tokenomics. And I know some people say, well, it's an accelerated vesting schedule. Maybe true, but it's in the hands of the few, uh, me personally. Not the hands of the few, but hands of some pretty uh, big investors. Anyhow, uh, but there is a project coming out that Algorand is uh, going to be a part of. It's going to be built on. You ever heard of LimeWire? Remember that back in the 90s? Well, LimeWire is going to come back with the help of Algorand. They're going to, they're going to team up with some pretty big, um, not influencers, artists. And it's going to be NFTs and, and uh, mostly audio. Kind of, I guess they're kind of competing with, with Audius. And that's going to be a big project. I'm not going to be into it, but it sounds good. So, yeah. And then also, don't forget Anthony Scaramucci and Skybridge. They invested a quarter of a billion dollars in the Algorand. And that's after they looked at all the different projects. So, yeah. Mike, good day. Do you see the market changing in July? No. I think it's going to be like this for a while. There's a reason why they say sell in May and go away. It's because you sell in May and enjoy your summer and then come back around uh, end of October. Do I think that end of October is going to be awesome? No idea. But uh, I'm hoping that around that time we can start to hit like an accumulation phase and everything's, I got to tell you, it almost looks like an accumulation phase right now. Everything's very flat. For, it's been arranged for quite some time. When are you expecting this bear market to end? Let me show you some graphs. I don't know. If I had to say, if we just go again, fo first of all, follow all the people. There's other people to follow. Uh, there's a link in the description. There's like eight different people I follow just to get some of the best information I possibly can. And everybody's pretty much saying the same thing. This year's pretty much shot. Also, blockchain backer also says, I think, stuff like that, too. Correct me. But uh, I don't think this is, like, the greatest year. I think next year we'll see some a little more sideways action, a little bit more positivity. But I don't think anything really, really takes off until, again, the halving comes up. You hear the same narrative. And even if it's real or not real, it's, it's the concept that counts. It's the same thing with technical analysis. People, people do TA and they go, this is going to go up. Then another person said, this is going to go up. Before you know it, you got a ton of people saying this is going to go up. And it's like a group think, and it actually happens. But of course, the smart ones go, I'm going to short that. And they, they drop it. But um, to me, I just see it's like the same group think narrative, four-year cycles, four-year cycles. I'll be talking about it. So I don't think uh, much happens until 2024. But again, you know where I made all my money? Uh, 2018. 2018, 2019, when I bought a bunch of the uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin and Cardano. That's what I like. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Just this time, I'm going to sell a lot more and stick to the damn plan and not be so greedy. Mullet's supposed to keep me honest. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Barone. Guy's got a great show. Nice guy. Great guy. Been on a show a couple of times. There's a lot of videos. <laughs> Rob, do you ever buy crypto options? No, my man, I do not. ETH expectation in December is looking good. Yes, it's looking good. We'll see if that uh, merge happens. I don't know. Inflation numbers, CPI numbers are coming out Friday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Are you selling? I've already, done, I've already done the selling that I was supposed to do a while back. So I am just not selling. I'm not buying. I'm just sitting here. And I think that's the reason why. Look at this. This might be the reason why we're seeing like these range bounds. Like, I mean, 0.4%, up 0.4 or down 0.4. It's the same thing over an S&P 500. I mean, they're down a little bit, but it's pretty. Let me see. I mean, we're kind of range bound, right? Let's see. Uh, a little bit up, but I don't, I just don't think that people are really like really buying a bunch or selling a bunch. They're just waiting for these numbers to come out. And I think that's, that's where it comes down to. And really, I think it rests on that. And of course people say, but it's priced in Rob. Okay. Maybe right. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it always is. Crown's crypto. Yeah. He's got some good stuff. He's uh 
he was on the, the DCA. He filled in for me. Seemed like a nice guy. Nice glasses. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bitcoin Maxi's bill trying to kill annotative cryptos or any other cryptos. Hmm. I mean, it's not the greatest. You'd think we'd all want an umbrella, but again, let's say Bitcoin is a commodity. All right. And now, of course, everything else is security. All right. Well, start registering. That's it. Like, are they going to take your crypto back because you bought a security? I think that's how it works. But it will be a problem for the exchanges. I'll tell you that. Rob, I see some are saying they expect inflation has come down some. You think that's even possible with how high energy costs are? First of all, I will say this. What concerns me with those CPI numbers, it seems like there's some cherry picking of data. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems like that's somehow some ways in the case, even the inflation numbers. So I don't know. That's, 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 the, that's the uncertainty. I don't know. And uh, since I can't say, like, we can't all pull the data ourselves it has to come from the government and we can i mean we can kind of make assumptions we can take a look at you know different uh, gas prices oil prices and different uh, um, different things that are out there but in all honesty nobody really really puts all their eggs in that basket they just wait for those cpi numbers to come out and that's where the group thing comes in so if they say inflation under control price go up if they say it's not under control price go down it's pretty much it so I don't know exactly where it is. Ah. If the crypto market cap is the lowest in Benchar, like 800 billion, what would the price of Bitcoin ETH sold be? So first of all, you have to determine what's the Bitcoin dominance. So if it's 800 billion and Bitcoin dominance is 90%, I mean, it's not, a, Bitcoin will do pretty well. And of course, Ethereum and everything else will crash. Or if it's just like it was back in 20... 17, where Bitcoin dominance was around 40%, depending on what time frame you're looking at. 860 billion or 840 billion, somewhere around there. Uh, that was the all-time high for the 2017 market market cap. And that's when Bitcoin was at 19,000 plus dollars. So if you think that Bitcoin go to 20,000, well, depending on dominance, that's where it'll go. Ethereum was, I want to say 1,200, somewhere around there. Uh, that's Ethereum. Solana wasn't around back then, so I couldn't even tell you, but it'll drop precipitously. And um, you, there's two ways to look at that. Uh, one, like, this is awful. I can't believe this is actually happening. Or two, wow, these things are really cheap. And look at all the people that are getting into the crypto space right now. It's just a matter of time. So it depends on you. That's why I, when I do these stories, I give you both sides. And I try to be as balanced as I can, not just go, hey, this is awesome because this just happened. Hey, this is also awesome because this happened. And guess what? This is super awesome because it's, I'm bullish and da-da-da. I think everybody's smart enough to see through that. So that's, that's it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> is Binance the new XRP? Because the SEC came against them uh, selling on... Um, uh, possible securities as far as Binance coin. I just think that... Like the SEC has a lot bigger fish to fry than that, but whatever. I will say this, it is a pretty centralized, like if, if they're looking at what's decentralized versus centralized and say, well, decentralized is definitely uh, the go-to factor as to what we consider a security and a non-security, then if you look at decentralization, Bitcoin beats everybody. And then Ethereum, okay, looking pretty good. Binance coin, it's like, I think it's held by three people. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just a very centralized product. It does work great, though. <laughs> just does. Ah, protect me harder, Gary. Rob, would you buy Digibyte? I bought Digibyte in the past. And, of course, I'm not going to say anything about it because uh, eventually someone will say, well, you should buy Digibyte because it's da-da-da-da-da. I'm just not going to buy it again because I just don't. I know it's fast and it's supposed to be great, but I don't get it. Let's see. Near might be the next soul. Maybe. I know that the sweat coin is going to be built on that. So pretty excited. I get to meet the near people. 
uh, and Sweatcoin people at uh, Consensus. So I'm pretty happy about that. Do you like Polygon? I do like Polygon. Have you ever used Polygon? Super awesome. I mean, it's like super fast and it's super cheap. The only problem is when you have to transfer from Solana, like on the, um, use a bridge from Polygon back to Ethereum. Ugh, freaking still expensive. Any thoughts about USDD? Someone sent me an email about that. Is that a stable coin? Ugh. I like USDC. I know people will say, but Rob, what about this stable coin, that stable coin? I don't know. I like USDC. Seems to work. Uh, CEO has gone before Congress before and said that uh, uh, Alistar, Alair, I forgot his name, uh, that, and he said, yeah, we're 100% uh, uh, backed by everything that we have as far as assets goes. And here's the paper trail and you can audit it uh, over the live long day. And um, I like that because we just saw what happened with Luna and their stable coin. So USDC. And that new bill from Lummis, they're going to make everybody turn their paperwork. So we'll see if, uh, if Tether really has been swimming naked when the tide comes in. We'll see. Or the tide rolls out. Ah, USDD is Tron stable. Blech. I, I don't know why you'd use it. I, I just don't get it. Like I can use USDC and Polygon and that's cheap. I know people say, well, USDD on Tron is very steep. That's true. And you know what? There's a lot of different, like even Peter McCormick from what, what Bitcoin did talked about this with Lynn Alden. He actually says, you know what? I think it was Lynn Alden that talked about it. She said, it's actually very good for different world, third world countries that need to have that help to actually be able to have a store of value and transfer funds when their uh, exchange is on fire or their, their uh, currency is on fire. And it's very cheap to do those things. So on that regard, sounds good. Me personally, I'm not going to use it because I don't need to. Oh, Lord. It's an algorithmic stable coin. Yeah, Justin Sun. I don't know. Great marketer. Rob, what coins do you have on your... I'll tell you, I have a lot of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's all I can tell you. I mean, it's like over 80% by now. Uh, <laughs> the CPI uses heat... Hedonic measurements, they find they're lying, picking whatever it makes looks bad. Probably so. And that's about it. Sorry, guys, today it's a, it's 100 degrees today here in El Paso. My computer is overheating. <laughs> I can see it because I'm getting a little more glitchy. I got I to gotta bring out the cool pads now to actually get through these uh, live streams. I got to go because if not, it will just shut down. So that's the beauty of living in Texas. Anyhow, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up, like, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. Adios.